Right now, former President Barack Obama, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz rallying in Madison today. Their message to voters as Election Day draws closer. Plus, early voting underway in Wisconsin. We're live at the polls with a look at what the turnout's been like so far. And later, dealing with gun violence in America. We hear from both sides of the aisle what they think the solution should be on the issue going forward. Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. We begin with breaking news. Madison police investigate a death after a body was found at the Hy-Vee grocery store on Whitney Way. Our Ellie La Liberté is live at the scene. Ellie, what can you tell us? Yeah, Eric, this is an active death investigation, but crews are beginning to wrap up the scene here right now. Now, we did get some new information just about 30 minutes ago from crews here that they do not believe this to be suspicious or criminal in any way. We also learned that the victim was about a man of about 50 years of age. Now, police got a call at around 3.15 p.m. and responded, they told me, in about two minutes to the scene here. They also appeared to be looking around that time into a clothing drop-off bin in that area. Now, police are also currently working with the medical examiner's office on this case. But for now, reporting live on Madison's west side, Ellie Oliverte, News 3 Now. Ellie, thank you. With just two weeks now before the November election, the race for the White House heating up with even more campaign visits. That includes today right here in Madison. Former President Barack Obama and Democratic Vice Presidential nominee, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz holding a rally as early voting gets underway in the state. We have team coverage of the event, and we start with News 3 Now's Armand Rahman, who is live at the Alliant Energy Center, where the Governor Walz and former President Obama held that rally today. Armand? Yeah, Eric, the Harris Walls campaign brought out the big guns from the De Democratic Party. Former President Barack Obama, who has been the only president in the past six elections to carry the state of Wisconsin by more than one percentage vote. Now, both Obama and Governor Tim Walls spent most of their time on stage trying to convince voters why they shouldn't vote for Donald Trump with lots of jokes attacking his recent visit, handing out food at a McDonald's in Pennsylvania, and his relationship with Elon Musk, the owner of X, formerly Twitter. They both, however, did highlight Harris's economic policy as a contrast as the best thing they say for the middle class going forward. And here's the beauty of it. She's laid out a plan. 100 million middle class Americans receiving a tax cut and up to $6,000 for new parents to get their kids off to a good start. We do not need a president who will make problems worse just to make his politics better. We need a president who actually cares about solving problems and making your life better. And that's what Kamala Harris will do. That's what Tim Walls will do. Now, Obama also repeated his famous catchphrase, don't boo, vote, as a way to stimulate anyone at the rally who was reacting but may still be undecided in their vote for president. This is the first time former President Obama has been to Wisconsin that when he hasn't been a presidential candidate. His uh, last time here was in 2012 when he was a, at a crowd of 18,000 people downtown in front of the city county building and then before that in 2008 at Bascom Hall. Well, and he went through a tour of Madison and Will Keneally, our political reporter, was in the motorcade with him right now and we'll uh, go to him now for more. Will? Hey, Armand. So we're here outside of the Dane County Regional Airport where Minnesota Governor Tim Walz uh, departed roughly uh, about an hour or so ago, I would say. Um, now, we were taking part in the motorcade for Tim Walz to provide you essentially a little bit of a behind the scenes look at the process here. We've been following with him all day that he's been here in Madison, uh, getting you a, a little bit of info. For example, uh, former President Barack Obama actually had to drive up from Chicago due to some plane issues and were able to you know, be there when both planes depart. Now, as you were mentioning before, uh, Democrats brought out some big names, certainly, uh, both national and local here to Wisconsin. Uh, we heard from Governor Evers and on the ballot this fall, uh, Senator Tammy Baldwin speaking. Now, kind of making sense uh, that she's appearing right before former President Barack Obama. She spoke about a provision of the Affordable Care Act that she helped write. Take a listen. Just, just a little bragging here. I wrote the provision in the Affordable Care Act that allows young people to stay on their parents' health insurance until they turn 26. And, and I will never stop fighting until all Americans have the quality, affordable health care that they need and deserve.
So Baldwin speaking there uh, again about the Affordable Care Act. Uh, now this comes the same day that early voting starts in Wisconsin. So Wisconsin voters can go to an early polling location uh, like your city hall, for example, um, cast your ballots there. That will run through uh, the last weekend um, ahead of the election there. And again, a lot of visits in Wisconsin. Uh, we saw Tim Walls here today. He will be back in Wisconsin on Thursday, as, as we mentioned before, early voting is underway. And we'll continue to provide you updates throughout the campaign here. But for now, reporting from the north side of Madison, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. All right, Will, thank you. Now to the race for U.S. Senate. Republican candidate Eric Hubdi out of the campaign trail today in Shorewood Hills. Hubdi cast his ballot before heading to a rally in Sun Prairie. Hubdi encouraged others to vote because it's impossible to predict what might happen on Election Day. I'm the tip of the spear, but I can't do it without all of you. I need you to call your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues. Grab them. Bring them into the voting booth. We've got to restore our great country. We've got to take this country back. Ahead of Hubdi's visit to Sun Prairie, the Baldwin campaign released a statement saying the senators completed 250 events and more than 50 interviews in 2024. And it reads in part, quote, Tammy Baldwin shows up. It's clear Eric Hubdi would rather hide in his office than explain his extreme agenda. And we also have an update on Hubdi's absence from a town hall. You'll recall we reported on at Madison West High School yesterday. As a reminder, West High School had hosted a Senate town hall to talk to all the U.S. Senate candidates. Senator Baldwin and Libertarian candidate Philip Anderson were there to answer questions. Hubdi sent News 3 now a statement last night saying, quote, our team never confirmed participation in today's event. We appreciate the opportunity, but the schedule just didn't end up working. A teacher at the event told News 3 Now Hovde canceled his appearance on Friday three days before the event. With today being the first day of early voting in Wisconsin, we have a crew at the polls with voters waiting in line already. Our Jalen Banks outside the Fitchburg City Hall. Jalen, were there a lot of voters out today that you saw? Eric, there's been tons of people here throughout the evening and even this morning. I've been here since about 1030 and for a vast majority of the day, the parking lot was full so much so that people started creating their own parking spots, parking in the grass and, and things of that nature here at uh, the polling uh, place here in Fitchburg. The line was so long at one point, people were leaning up against the entry doors almost to the point where the line would start spilling out into the parking lot. Now, Wisconsin is just one of many states getting early voting underway. Many swing states already have early in-person vote enrolling, that being Michigan, Pennsylvania, um, Georgia as well. AP reporting today that there has been 17 million plus early ballots um, cast so far that being mail-in and both in person. And speaking with Fitchburg voters here today, the amount of people that they've seen is unlike anything they've seen in years past. Compared to years past, would you say it's always looked like this or is it different? No, it has never looked like this. In fact, the ladies inside taking your ballot say they've never seen it like this. And how long did you end up waiting in line? Two hours. Now, if you plan on voting early in person, you have to vote within your municipality. And as you just heard one of the voters say, they haven't seen anything quite like this. It'll be something to keep an eye on over the next few days with early voting underway, both here in Wisconsin and throughout the country. But for now, I'm going to send it back to you, Eric. Reporting live in Fitchburg, Jalen Banks, News 3 Now. All right, Jalen, thank you. Some of us saw just a little bit of rain today. Let's check your first one forecast. And Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington out on the patio. Alex? Eric, some of us saw a couple of sprinkles. I had to run an errand today. I had a car issue, but it's all good. And I had some raindrops on my vehicle right around the noon hour today. Also, we've been experiencing temperatures slowly working their way down. I've been mentioning for the past couple of days, we'd be starting to work towards more realistic temperatures for this time of year, although it's still very mild yet. But we will have some continuing cooling across southern Wisconsin. And yes, some of us did see a couple of raindrops, especially from the Wisconsin River Valley and Point South areas over Grant County, over towards Lafayette, Green and Rock. Saw a couple of rain showers, was on the phone with WCLO and Beloit. They had a couple of raindrops today. Areas north saw absolutely nothing. And even the folks that saw a couple of raindrops very few and far between and not a whole lot, but we have better rain chances in the forecast. I mentioned temperatures are cooling. We've got mid 60s across southern Wisconsin as we speak right now. Here in Dane County, we've got 66 to the west in Cross Plains, 65 to the southeast. And as I mentioned, rain is going to be knocking on our doorstep again come Thursday night. How much rain can you expect? I'll let you know in a couple of minutes. All right, Alex, thank you. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, Target announcing discounts to help boost consumer spending during the holidays, plus the Big Ten and Abbott 
teaming up to tackle one of the biggest blood shortages in a generation with one of the largest blood drive competitions ever. How you can be a part of it. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Brought to you by Ruber Law Offices. Driving comes with risk. You may be a safe driver, but there's the risk that others are not. What's not a risk? Calling Gruber Law Offices. The call is free, and there's never a fee until we win. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. Billionaire banker Eric Hovde has a plan for Social Security. Do you favor either raising the retirement age or cutting benefits? I favor both. Raising the retirement age? You have to start changing the retirement age. Hovde wants to raise the retirement age as high as 72. And Hovde just proposed cutting Social Security by 28%, costing the average beneficiary more than $6,000 a year. Eric Hovde, what's wrong with this guy? I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. A flood of illegals, skyrocketing prices, global chaos, and Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Nothing will change with Kamala. More weakness, more war, more welfare for illegals, and even more taxes. Only President Trump cut middle class taxes, and only President Trump will do it again. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. Thursday at 10, crime is a hot button issue for voters and the candidate. I'm taking a deep dive into the state of criminal justice here in Wisconsin and the impact it could have on you and your wallet. Three for the people, Thursday on News 3 Now at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Today is the first day of a three-day blood drive hosted by UW, part of a larger push from Abbott and the Big Ten Conference to combat the largest blood shortage in a generation. They're pitting 18 schools against each other for a blood donation competition to see who can get the most by the end of the football season. The winning school will get a million dollars to advance student or community health. Personally, I have to look away when, when they do it and when they when they take it, but as long as I'm doing that and I'm thinking happy thoughts, like we're all good. So even though you might be a little nervous about it, the nurses are always so great. Whoever's taking your blood, they always do a really good job. So it's super, super easy. I know it might be a little scary, but I highly, highly, highly encourage it. Well, the blood drives for tomorrow and Thursday are at Nicholas Recreation Center, and they go from 11 to 5. And if you can't make it but still want to donate blood, go to redcrossblood.org. Target slashing prices on thousands of items ahead of the holiday shopping season. The retailer will cut prices on more than 2,000 home goods, beauty products, toys, and food and beverage items. Some prices have already dropped, and the discounting will continue through December. This is the second time this year that Target has cut prices in an attempt to lure in inflation-wary shoppers. The discounts have helped boost consumer spending after a string of dreadful quarters for the company. Still ahead, the Coats for Kids campaign prepares to distribute all of the winter apparel that's been collected, plus combating gun violence, what advocates on both sides of the aisle say needs to be done. And temperatures becoming more seasonable for the rest of the week. Alex, with your complete forecast when we come back. Out of money, I know. <laughs> I am not rich as hell. I work hard. I scrape to get by. Donald Trump wants to give tax breaks to billionaires, but Kamala Harris has plans to help us. She's going to crack down on price gouging and cut taxes for working people like me. I voted for Donald Trump before, but this time I'm voting for Kamala. FFPAC is responsible for the content of this ad. Technology is everywhere, and our kids are embracing it to learn, play, and socialize. But with endless ways to access the digital world, monitoring their screen time can be tough. So SSM Health and News 3 Now created the Time for Kids Digital Playbook. Join us on air and online for stories and strategies to help your family navigate, set rules, and stay safe in the ever-evolving digital age. Let's focus on tech together by taking Time for Kids. 
Under Kamala, there's been a big hike in Medicare premiums. Social Security benefits don't go far with Kamala's inflation slamming seniors. Now Kamala wants struggling seniors to pay more Social Security taxes, while she gives Medicare and Social Security to illegals. That will do Medicare. President Trump will make sure no one cuts Medicare or Social Security. Trump lowered Medicare premiums, and he'll end the tax on Social Security. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Something big is happening at hy V. We've lowered thousands and thousands of prices on thousands and thousands of items in every aisle and in every department, online too, and on many of your favorite products. We've even matched prices with some of the biggest discount stores in the country because we get it, times are still tough. So we'll continue to work hard to bring you new lower prices on thousands of items. Things are looking different at hy V. Come see for yourself. My husband and I were elated to find out that we would be having another baby. But after many tests, my doctors agreed that we had to terminate the pregnancy. It was the worst day of my life. You should know that Eric Hubdi supports laws that stop me and my doctor from making that decision. And that's a ban with no exceptions in cases of rape or incest. It's a ban that could turn doctors into criminals. He opposes abortion, period. When Senate is responsible for the content of this ad. Continuing our three for the people coverage this week, we're tackling the issue of crime and today we're zeroing in on gun control. Our Maddie Heim sat down with advocates on both sides of the aisle. Maddie. More than 48,000 people died by gunfire in the United States in 2022. 830 of those deaths happened here in Wisconsin. Most Americans agree that gun violence is a problem in our communities, but what they disagree on is the solution. There is no cookie cutter approach. Anthony Cooper is the CEO and founder of violence prevention organization Focused Interruption. Some of these common sense things uh, don't don't always meet the smell test. And Rob Kovac is the president of Wisconsin's NRA affiliation. Both serve communities here in Dane County where firearm deaths have recently outpaced motor vehicle deaths for the first time ever. On the federal level, gun violence is growing at the same trajectory. So on the national stage, you'll hear similar discussions. They spend their time banning books instead of banning assault weapons. Clearly, strict gun laws is not the thing that is going to solve this problem. So how do we solve this problem? problem. Cooper says to start at the cause. We need to make sure that we're connecting people with, that means uh, mental health, mental health, um, just overall wellness, but then also how are we also making sure that our, our youth are being supported. And that's something both parties agree on. We unfortunately have a mental health crisis in this country. I don't think it's the whole reason why we have such a bad gun violence problem, but I do think it's a big piece of it. But Cooper says it can't end at mental health support. So gun locks is, is, is one part of it, but then also I even think evaluation also need to be a, another part of it as, as well before someone actually is able to purchase a, a gun. Kovac says the solution can't compromise constitutional rights. Without the Second Amendment, uh, all of the other amendments have no means of, of defense against tyranny in the future. We're really a civil rights organization. In Wisconsin, traditionally Democratic policies like universal background checks, safe storage laws, and assault weapon bans are currently not enforced. We find things that make it really impractical for the, the law-abiding citizen. Yeah, it's, it might interfere with uh, the rare criminal that goes to a store to buy a firearm, but Otherwise, it's interfering with those law-abiding citizens' ability to access their firearms rights. But Cooper says those rare criminal instances... Nine times out of ten, someone that who has been impacted by gun violence will eventually pick up a gun. ...can set off a ripple effect with consequences that long surpass this year's election. Tomorrow in our Three for the People coverage, I sit down with local law enforcement officials. Hear what they have to say about federal policies affecting the safety of our communities on Wednesday on News 3 Now. Maddie, thank you. Temperatures cooling down, maybe some rain chances. Alex rejoins us with a complete look at the forecast. You bet, Eric. All of the above temperatures are on their way down. By the time we get to the 10 o'clock newscast, Jacob will be here 59 degrees, but mind you, that's still above our normal high temperature for this time of year. But it is not near 80 degrees that we've been experiencing 
experiencing in the past couple of days. The rest of the evening, our temperatures will continue to slowly work their way down. It takes a while by the time we get to wake up hour tomorrow morning. That's when we'll see those temperatures get down into the upper 40s to right around 50 degrees, and then the cooler air will continue to stream on in as we carry further into Wednesday. 64 in Madison, 66 in the Wisconsin River Valley, 66 tied in Camp Douglas, and 66, well, there is a third tie there in Janesville. So mild yet this evening. We've got 63s and 64s. Temperatures in the mid upper 60s for this time of year. Again, still considerably above normal for this time of year. We reach our low at about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Mid 40s in the Wisconsin River Valley will do 48 in Madison and 51 in Janesville. As we have strong northwesterly winds, it's going to feel significantly colder tomorrow, even though the temperatures at noon, mid 50s, and our high temperatures in the mid to upper 50s, that's absolutely where we should be for this time of year in late October. Temperatures will be combined with winds in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range Wednesday morning. So I'll put it that chill in that air, that fall like feel. But by the time we get into Wednesday night, the winds will weaken considerably. And that's going to set the stage for the possibility of a little bit of patchy frost as we go into Wednesday night. Good chance of rain on Thursday for all of southern Wisconsin. Let's track it together. 9 o'clock entering southwestern Wisconsin. Widespread 4 or 5 o'clock Friday morning. Could have a rumble or two of thunder across southern Wisconsin. No severe weather is expected. And then that gets out of here as we go late Friday morning into the afternoon hours. Wind switch out of the northwest again. That's going to usher in another reinforcing batch of cooler air. Some places could pick upwards of an inch right now from Madison, southwestern Wisconsin. I don't want you to get married to this precipitation forecast quite yet because the weather system still has 48 hours before it's here and that can move north or south just a bit. A fall like weekend is in store and then those temperatures warm right back up by Tuesday of next week out ahead of a cold front. That cold front could bring a strong line of thunderstorms to the Midwest. Right now we're eyeing up. It looks like Wednesday is when that cold front will come through bringing that chance of showers and thunderstorms to southern Wisconsin and Halloween is looking normal temperature wise we could even have a little bit of frost Halloween night just no snow on Halloween yeah. <laughs> we've had enough of those Alex thank you time is running out to volunteer for the coach for kids distribution event the event takes place on Friday the 25th 9 to 6 at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Dane County in Fitchburg Madison and Sun Prairie people can pick out a winter coat and other winter apparel from the event for free Meanwhile, volunteers can sign up to help by emailing the BGCDC Volunteer Coordinator. We have a link to that email at channel3000.com. And coming up, it's boards. Kelly Sheffield, one win away from a major milestone at Wisconsin. While he credits his success to his coaching staff. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now, first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. You have a clear choice in this election. Senator Baldwin is a 38-year career politician. I'm a businessman and job creator. She supports taxpayer benefits for illegal immigrants. I'll close the border. Tammy wants to put guys and girls sports and in their bathrooms. I'll protect our daughters. Senator Baldwin abuses the political system. I'll fight the corruption. I'm Eric Covey and I prove this message. I'd be honored to have your vote. How extreme is Todd Novak? He thinks a woman's most private medical decisions should be up to him. Todd Novak has a 100% anti-abortion rating. He supports letting politicians ban abortion with no exceptions for rape, incest, or to save a woman's life. And Todd Novak authored the law to ban abortion here in Wisconsin. Elizabeth Grobby will defend abortion rights. She knows private medical decisions are between women and their doctors. When it comes to your critical medical decisions, you should have the final say. But extreme politician Joan Balwig says you're wrong. She supports criminalizing abortion even after rape and incest. Or to save the life of the mother, Balwig would jail doctors for giving life-saving care. And Balwig even wrote the law that could deny women access to birth control. Joan Balwig would put extreme politicians in charge of your body and put all Wisconsin women in danger.
Under Kamala, there's been a big hike in Medicare premiums. Social Security benefits don't go far with Kamala's inflation slamming seniors. Now Kamala wants struggling seniors to pay more Social Security taxes, while she gives Medicare and Social Security to illegals. That will do Medicare. President Trump will make sure no one cuts Medicare or Social Security. Trump lowered Medicare premiums, and he'll end the tax on Social Security. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Have you heard Eric Humphrey? I am totally opposed to abortion. I am totally opposed to politicians telling women what we can do. Extremists all over the country have passed abortion bans. Criminal penalties for doctors. No exceptions for rape or incest. Women are dying just trying to get health care. There are even restrictions in Wisconsin. This has to stop. I am totally opposed to abortion. We are, are totally, totally opposed, opposed to Eric Humphrey. Humphrey. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. A 1-3 start to the season wasn't what the Badger Meds hockey team envisioned, but the good news, there's plenty of hockey left to be played. The bad it doesn't get any easier this weekend. Wisconsin heads to the Mile High City to drop the puck against the reigning national champs, Denver, a team that hasn't lost since March 8th. The Badgers, though, are looking at their series against the nation's top-ranked team as a great opportunity. We've got an accomplished group that understands what it is to win. We're still trying to find that. And uh, I think a big piece of that formula is making sure you get off to good starts. Uh, because in that building, they can turn one into two into three in a hurry. It's a great opportunity for us to, you know, kind of prove some of those outsiders um, wrong, in a sense. And, um, you know, really just uh, show everyone the confidence we have in, our, in each other. Wisconsin Volleyball's victory over Michigan on Sunday gave Kelly Sheffield win number 305 at UW, tying him with Hall of Fame head coach Pete Waite for most in program history, meaning one more win and he'll stand alone as Wisconsin's all-time winningest coach. And in true Kelly Sheffield fashion, he made sure to make it clear the wins aren't all him. He has a pretty good coaching staff, too been really fortunate that it's the same crew, uh, the same group, and, uh, uh, and I think it benefits our players in uh, unbelievable ways that there's a predictability, there's a flow, there's a cohesiveness, uh, there's a joy uh, that our staff has with each other, and uh, that's, that's been a major part of this. And don't forget to check out this week's Wisconsin Huddle with Towie Walker. Show starts Friday at 6.30 right here on News 2. Now, we had we had some fun last night taping it, so. And a huge game coming up this weekend. Big time Doesn't game. get any bigger than this. Final check of the forecast. Final check. Rain is what we're looking at for Thursday night. We could use those raindrops. Fall-like weekend ahead and a strong cold front Tuesday and Wednesday of next week to bring some thunderstorms to the area, but I'm forecasting a classic Halloween forecast. Temperatures, or they should be. All right. Alex, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. We'll be back here tonight for News 3 Now at 10.